Hello and welcome and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to talk about filter element in Flow. I think this is fairly new, so it came out two or three releases before. And I wanted to talk about the use case on when to use filter element, as well as what are some of the nuances with the filter element. So let's jump right in. So here my use case today is, um, let's say you had to query and for query inside of Flow, you will always use get records. That's like the query for any records that you're trying to get. So for example, if your use case is you wanted to get a list of opportunities, you can do that using get records element. Then um, somewhere down the flow, you want to get all the closed one opportunities, let's say. If there was not a filter, you would have to query all the closed one opportunities by using get element again, which means that will be additional query in the database. And then let's say down the line again, inside the same flow, you have to query all the closed lost opportunities, which means you are again going to use get element and then where stage name is closed lost. So as you can see, you already are down to three queries, but you can actually shorten that or you can re reduce the number of queries by using filter element. So what filter element does is you can first just query all the opportunities and I would still recommend uh, using a where inside your first query to just filter out anything that's not needed, maybe a high level where here in this case. But then afterwards, if you want to like filter it more specific, like stage name basis, maybe you want to filter in all stages and do certain things. For example, you want to query all the closed one opportunities and maybe send an email to those uh, owners of those opportunities, or maybe anything that's on pipeline, you want to remind someone or create tasks for those opportunities in pipeline. So in that case, you can just query all the opportunities of that record types and then filter through that filter element and keep going and you know do your processes inside the flow. So that would be a really good use case to use the filter. Now let's look at the flow. There is a flow already built out, but I wanted to show you step by step. So I'm gonna actually go to setup and um, start from scratch. And I'm going to say new flow. And in this case, just to keep things simple, I'm just going to use a screen flow. Because I'm not actually going to do anything. I just wanted to show you the filter element. So just starting out with all the opportunities here. So I'm just going to say, first you really don't want to use collection filter at the beginning because that's actually filtering the list that you already have. So the first thing I want to do is get records. So I'm just going to say get ops. I'll get all opportunities here. And since it's a dev org, I don't have many records. I'm just going to say, give me all the opportunities. I don't recommend doing this uh, for a real org, especially if you have a lot of data all records here and I'm just going to say automatically store all fields. So basically that's my list of opportunities. Now, if you go to the manager, you'll already see that I have a record collection variable that is important to note. So we have one record collection variable here. Now let's say I want to actually, I only care about close one opportunity in this case, then I'm going to use our filter element, which is right here, collection filter. So I'm just going to say filter ops by closed one. And you'll see where we'll use that. So first, first it will ask me to select a collection. So you must have a collection already before you can use filter. Just selecting that collection that we had. And this is where you're gonna set the filter. So stage name equal to closed one because that is my filter and it always helps to pro follow proper naming conventions. So, you know, by just by looking what it is and hit done. Now, the moment I hit done, you will notice that on the left hand side, I do have other variables got created. So I have a single variable, which is current item underscore filter ops by closed one, which was my actual element and also have a record collection, which is opportunities from filter up. So it can tell you that, okay, now this, this was the main list. So going back to the diagram, we have the main list, then we use the filter and it filtered out all everything else but closed one opportunities. So that's the smaller list here, opportunities from filter ops. Now, just for fun, let's run this and see what actually happens in the background. So I'm just gonna save this and hit debug just to see what's going on so far. So I'm just hitting run and here I can see that I have, first thing it gives me all the records, successfully found records. And then it tells me this is 
how many items were in the source collection and this is how many got filtered out so i have 18 closed one opportunities because it's telling me like hey this is equal closed one and these are the number of records so now the question is now the second uh, smaller filter variable that got created is a bucket of the bigger one so it's like a subset so we have this big list and this is smallest but this is still a list regardless which means we can't just access it directly what we need to do is then use a loop element to access the each individual record because presumably you want to do something with those records and to do something with those records you want you will probably have to use a loop to get through it so let's just use a loop here loop through filtered ops here and then I'm going to use the filter ops because that's what I want and just following all the default values so now we're looping through the filter ops now inside the loop I'm going to use an assignment to access those individual records inside the filter list so what that means is I'm going to use an assignment element here filtered ops and I'm just going to create a new resource and keeping it simple here just text and I'm really just interested in the name of the opportunity okay equals and now I'm going to use current item because this is the loop variable that's looping through that list and I'm just going to say name which will bring me the opportunity name that's it and if you want you can also go further and add all of those names to collection of names um, so let's do that as well just so we can see everything um, just going to use assignment here and add names to a list what that means is now you need to create a new resource of this time same thing we're going to do text but now we're going to allow multiple values going to say op name list all right so what I'm gonna do now so we cannot use equals anymore because anytime you're adding something to a list you'll have to use add because now you're adding to it and what are you gonna add is the very collection variable from the above so because we already have a name so this is text and this is text list it has to match so you can't put like a number inside a text field hit done and I'm still getting used to this auto layout by the way so now we're getting out of the collection uh, loop and over here I'm going to say I'm just gonna print everything that I just went through so just adding display text and insert a resource and I'm going to just literally print out um, the names Okay, so I'll just type that here and hit done. Okay, I'm getting an error. All right, this needs to be an API name, so let's do that. All right, so now let's run it and see what's happening. Whoa, that's interesting. <laughs> I have never seen anything like this. Okay, so let's see what happened in the flow. I'm going to go to the assignment. I think I have an idea. Okay, so op name list adds op name list. So basically added the same thing over, which is not what we want. We want the actual text that we uh, said we're going to use where name. This is the one that we need to use. Okay, now let's try that again. Debug this. Okay, so that looks more reasonable. And if you notice here now, as you'd expect, what's happening is we're going through the, first we are going through the filter list, then we are looping through it. And inside the loop, we have an assignment 
and it's going to loop through all the opportunities and add one by one the names to it. So first is gene point lab generators and then it adds another one and another one and it just keeps going and ends the loop once all the 18 things are inside the, the collection, it will exit the loop. So now at this point, now that you are out of the loop, you could have done plenty of things here. You could, if you wanted to maybe um, have a list of owner IDs, you could have gotten a list of owner IDs. And then after, instead of the screen, you could probably send an email out to people with that ID, so that user IDs. Or you could have, maybe you needed to do an update on those opportunities. Then if you have an assignment inside the loop, you could loop through that, assign values as you need uh, for each fields. And then you could insert or update outside of the loop at once. We always recommend any update, insert, or query should happen outside the loop, never inside the loop, unless that's the last resort and you know that there will not be more than a handful of records for that, um, then it's acceptable. Otherwise, never put any of the get, um, update, anything like that inside of our loop. Okay, so what did we do here is instead of getting opportunities once, then again getting opportunities for close one, then close loss and so on, we are just getting it once and then just filtering that. Now, if I want it, maybe after this is done, I probably want to use add another filter. And this time I only want to get close last opportunities. And I could do that without querying it again, because I have a collection filter. And now this time I will say close last ops. And I will again use the main collection. I'll not use this unless that's your requirement, unless you want to filter it further. But in this case, I'm just going to use the main collection. And then instead of stage name close one, I'll just say stage name equals close lost. And then I could loop through it. Remember, you have to loop through it to access it. You cannot directly access the value inside it. Um, I'm just going to show you an example quickly. So let's say I wanted to directly access something inside. And it's tempting to see that there is a current item, single variable. Oh, why can't I just use that? Let's try that. So I'm going to just create a resource here. Var op lost. And it should be a text step. I just want to get one name of a lost opportunity. And I'm going to say, you know what, since I have a current item from loop close lost, so this is close lost, and there's a dot symbol, I'm just going to use that instead. And it will only give me one value, but at least it will give me something. And let's see what happens. It's going to save it. And maybe I'll add another screen element here to, just show, to show what it looks like. name okay, that's fine and i'll just add a output again here okay done so let's save this and debug this and i want you to pay close attention to this last screen and see what happens there so i'm going to hit debug and you'll see the same stuff like before where we have 17, it was 18, but I had to close last one opportunity. So we have 17 opportunities and all the names are here. So as expected, hit next. So now we are expecting there's one 55 target that remains the same. It's filtering out only one because I only have one close last opportunity in my org, but then see the here, like you would expect here to be a name because we used current item it looks like it would have name, but it won't. So that's why whenever you try to use a filter variable or filtered list, you always have to loop through it to get the actual value inside the filter. Now, I don't know the purpose behind the current item or what this is used for, but so far I've only been successful um, using the actual filtered list, which is, let me go back, which is this list that gets created. So anytime you have a filter, it will create this list. This one, don't worry about it. Once you have this list, just loop through it 
to do whatever you need to do so as we did here so that's the only part i want to call out about this filtered um, element so hope this was helpful for you and you learned something new and if you find this video helpful let me know if there are other elements that you wanted me to cover specifically and i'll be happy to make a video on that so thank you so much for watching